everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I haven't done an inlay for a while, so as I have this beautiful piece of horse chestnut, I think I'll do one. Now horse chestnut is a, a wood that you don't often see uh, people turning very much. I'm not quite sure why, because it, uh, it can finish quite beautifully. And we've got a nice bit of spalting in here as well, so hopefully it will turn out to be an interesting piece. I'm not quite sure exactly what inlay I'm going to put in it yet, so stay tuned and you'll find out. Well, we'll both find out. Right, we'll be starting off turning with a, uh, a crown half inch ball gouge. Sharpened up. I'm going to do some finishing cuts on here just to see if we can sort out a bit of the end grain problems we've got. Recess in, and we'll start sanding. Right, I'm going to cut the recess initially with the point nose carbide, just coming in at a slight angle. Cut the recess. Finish off with a flat card. Like. We'll clean it up with a three quarter inch skew. Start off the sanding. Oh, beautiful bit of burl there. Right, I'll start off the sanding. Uh, I'll, you can watch a bit of it, but I'll not, not let you stick around for all of it. Right, we've sanded up to 800, and the figure in this wood is absolutely incredible. So we're going to do our very best to make the most of it. I'm going to put some sealer on now, allow that to sit in for a little while, and then polish the surface, or braid the surface, sorry, with some uh, 
This from Yorkshire Grit. I think you'll agree. That's quite special. And it's only going to get better. for a little bit before we put the Yorkshire grit on it. Okay, it's a good while to sit. I'll put on the Yorkshire grit. Don't leave any residue of the Yorkshire grit on here, so I'm just going to go over it again with a bit of isopropyl alcohol, and that will clean off any excess. taken off. Right, the final coat is going to be a mixture of boiled linseed oil and shellac. It's messy but it's wonderful stuff. sit for a couple of seconds and then I'll buff it off. Okay, it doesn't need long. Well, right, let's turn this around and see if we can do it just with, with a nice enough inlay. Right, before we start thinking about the inlay, I'm just going to face this off and get it trued up. I think with something this beautiful, it requires something equally as beautiful in terms of inlay. Now I did consider, I have considered doing a resin, but with this wood being quite light, uh, in other words, not very dense, there's a good chance that any kind of resin is going to go through and seep through onto the edges, and I don't want to spoil the inside or the outside by putting resin in. So I'm going to use pewter. I've used this once before on a video, uh, but it was on a much smaller scale. I've never used it on a bowl quite as big before, but I think a bowl this beautiful deserves a little bit of a risk being taken with it. Right, so I'm not going to, let's say, I'm going to hollow it out first and then I'm going to cut the inlay for the pewter. Sharpen up again. Right, before I start hollowing out, I'm going to try and give myself an idea of 
where I want the inlay to be. Too big. I think it's too big. Let's get my rubber out. Okay. I'll lose everything inside there. There, just double check on the uh, on the thickness. Yeah, it's thin enough. Can't go much. Oh, crikey! Oh, bloody heck! Sorry. Keep on trying to think of better places to put the cameras to uh, give you more <laughs> a better view of the job. But I keep on banging them with my head. Okay, right, I've got the finishing cuts just to. To smooth up this inside a bit. I'll need to get in there with a scraper. This is a 30mm, uh, about an inch and a quarter, negative rake scraper. I'm just going to put it in, raise it to the rest of it, just to clean up the inside. Right, it's time to cut the recess for the pewter. Uh, normal recesses with resin or anything like that can just go straight in. With pewter, it needs to be undercut a little bit, otherwise it has a chance of uh, coming out. So I'm going to use a, a sharp carbide for the outer bits and then just undercut them. A bit like the internal tenon you would do for mounting on a chuck. That's gonna run a bit of sandpaper around there just to clean those edges up. Set up for pouring pewter. Okay, 
Okay, this is the, the way it's hopefully going to happen. I've got this perfectly flat. So when I pour in the pewter, it will run around the whole thing. I'm going to heat the crucible in two ways, over the flame and with a blowtorch. I'm going to take it past its normal melting point, which is around uh, 220 degrees C. Uh, and then when I feel it's hot enough, we're going to pour it. And then we start praying. Plus it was a complete success, so we'll see how it goes. Ideally it's doing one pour, just didn't have quite enough in my crucible. A second or two to cool down and put it back on the lathe. My heart has stopped pounding and we're back on the lathe. Now it was going smoothly up until the point when I ran out of pewter to pour, so Adding the extra bit at the end, which hopefully has done the trick, but the only real way to find out is to turn it back. Now most tools we'll use will work perfectly happy on pewter, it's not that hard, it's a bit like lead. But I'm just going to use a scraggy old carbide tip here I've got just to take the thick of the, the outside stuff off. Put the face mask on, let's see what we've done. I'm going to keep the speed fairly low at the start because the extra weight we've put on isn't quite balanced and it may start wobbling so I'm going to start it low and see how it goes. I'm not sure why it's gonna let me back in the house. This is everywhere. It's down my back, in my hair. Not that I've got much hair. Still a bit warm in places. Still one low spot there we haven't touched. And still one high spot there. I need to take back further. Cool. Happy. Well. So far I'm happy. I'm going to keep all these shavings and see if I can extract the pewter from the uh, sawdust because it may make an interesting inlay. Let's just try the gouge on there, see how it copes. Okay, 
cool. I think the rest of that I can get with sanding. Right, we're up to uh, 800 over the whole thing, about 2,000 on the pewter, just to give it that mirror image. We can still go a bit further yet with the uh, uh, with the paste, abrasive paste we're going to put on. But now's the time just to put a bit of sealer on, just to help protect the wood, get it ready for its next stage. Missed a bit sanding there, but it's just the burrs. Sorry, the burls in the wood. I've panicked. Well, we'll let that sit for a little bit, and then we'll come back with some Yorkshire grit. We're going to use the normal and ultra fine. Okay, normal grit first. Just the ultra fine, just on the outside. Okay, right, ready for the final finish. The darker edges from where the uh, the sanded pewter has got into the grain gives it a kind of like a, a 3D drop shadow kind of effect, which is not unpleasant at all. When we get to a thousand subscribers, we're going to be giving away a bowl, probably very much like this one. And all you need to do to be in, a, in with a chance of winning the bowl is to have liked and subscribed to the channel, like the video and have left a comment. Leaving a comment is the most important bit because that's where I'm going to be picking the winners from. So if you have enjoyed it, then please consider subscribing. If you leave a comment as well and like it, then you'll be entered into the giveaway when we get to a thousand subscribers. And as we speak, we're, I think, 200 subscribers away. Take this off the lathe and see what we've done. And there we have it. A horse chestnut bowl with pewter inlay. This piece of wood is absolutely phenomenal. It's got some such incredible grain on it. There's burls, there's absolutely everything on it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit the like button, subscribe, uh, and if you leave a comment as well, you'll be entered into the competition for the giveaway. Uh, but apart from that, thank you very much indeed for watching, and I'll see you next time.